Hello and welcome to a Minecraft Bedrock Edition add-on tutorial and showcase by me, Foxy no Tail, here in a little world all about mob heads. And I think it's fair to say that mob heads for Bedrock Edition Minecraft is probably one of the most sought after and requested add-ons out there. I can't believe no one's done it yet. So I took it upon myself to do it. And with a little bit of help from Groover Guy as well on some of the resources as well, the textures for these things, we have created it and we're even using it on Truly Bedrock Season 2. Okay, so these things that have been created are not variations on the vanilla skulls and heads that you can get from the vanilla games. Very much like the vanilla tweaks mob heads pack that you can get for Java edition of the game. They are basically just retextured skulls and you can put them on your head and things like that. For Bedrock Edition, that's not possible. So what we've had to do is create entire new entities that do, basically they're just entities that are in the world. So let's grab this drown head, for instance. We can put it down and we can put it on blocks and things like that. We can put it on the side of blocks. We can put it wherever we want, really, but we cannot put it on our head. It's not a skull, so we can't put it on our head. But what we can do, because, you know, Bedrock Edition is a little bit upside down and back to front, we can sit on it. We can use it as a chair, okay? We can't put it on our heads, but we can put it on our butts, if you like. Or we can put our butts on it, whichever way around you want to look at that. So, there's a few differences. So, what does the pack include? Well, we've got a whole range of mobs. We have every single mob in the game, except for the Wither Boss, because I forgot to do that, basically. But that will be coming in an update, so don't worry. And the Toast Bunny, because of the way the game works, we can't get the Toast Bunny heads. And we can only get white sheep heads. Now, we'll get a white sheep head from any type of sheep, but we can't get the coloured one just because of the way the game structures the sheep. Uh, yeah, it would be a massive rewrite for me to do that, so I'm not going to do that. We're just going to have white sheep heads for now. But in terms of other variants, we can get all of the different other variants. Like we can get the Arctic Fox and the Normal Fox. We can get the different coloured llama heads and cats and rabbits and pandas and moose rooms. And f oh yeah, we can only get the one tropical fish type as well. But uh, you know, there's loads and loads of variations. Now, if I go to my creative inventory and type in head, you'll see just how many heads there are. And you'll see that there are a different head for each different type of villager. And not just each different type of villager, but each different type of villager from the different village biomes as well so most of them will look exactly the same there's hardly any that have the biome variant but in the future we might change the resources so that they will actually look like they're from the different biomes that's great foxy but how does it work i'm glad you asked it's very simple you get a mob hey cow like that one over there you grab yourself a sword now it will work with any type of sword or weapon as long as whatever it is you're killing gets killed by the player it will if your chances are right, it will drop a skull. Now, things like pigs and cows, there's a very, very, very low drop chance because they're easily farmable. Now, things like villagers, there's a very high drop chance. So, let's grab a villager. Give myself a little bit of strength there just so that I can, uh, yeah, kill him in one shot. A villager will drop its head every single time it is killed, basically just so you don't go around murdering all of the villagers and having like o OP villager breeders trying to get all the different variants. But you would have to kill an absolutely ridiculous number of cows in order to get a mob head, unless you're really, really lucky. You know, the chances of getting a cow head are very low because they're easily farmable and you generally tend to kill a lot of them. But there we go, look, we did get a cow head from that which is fantastic. The looting enchantment will increase your chances of getting these. And in terms of the chances, the rates that which they'll drop, I've used the exact same rates from the Java Edition Vanilla Tweaks version. So thank you very much whoever did the Vanilla Tweaks pack or whoever worked out the chances for that. We've basically copied and pasted those. So yeah, we saved a little bit of work to be honest with you and also meant that the two packs are in line with each other in terms of how often things will drop. Now, we've also got some unique styles of head. You might have noticed from the villager already, they're not all just little boxes. We actually have the 3D effect on quite a lot of the mobs. The witch, for, inst for instance, I really like because she's got her pointy hat and the ravager there with its horns as well. Well, there are a couple of other things to mention about this pack, and I've already mentioned that the wither boss will not drop a head, and neither will the toast bunny because of the way the pack's coded, and also about the white sheep heads. We could only get the white colored sheep heads. Another thing is the fact that anything that is a variant, so any mob that has a variant, kind of like a moose room, for instance, and there's a perfect example. 
Anything that has a variant, the babies will also drop loot now as well. And there's, that's unavoidable, sadly, the way I've had to code the mob heads into the pack. We've changed the entities. So when entities have a baby, uh, let's see if we can get a baby mushroom. There we go. The, uh, the babies will now also drop loot. They won't drop XP, but they will drop like beef and leather and stuff like that if it's a baby mob, which is, is a shame. It makes the game a little bit more OP when, in regards to baby mobs, but there's not a lot I can do about that. I think that's something we can easily overlook for the mob heads. So we can do a few things with armor stands as well as you might expect. Now, they are not like the player heads or the skulls. You cannot put these things directly on an armor stand. Let's pop an armor stand down. If I click on it, it's not going to go on the armor stand. It's just going to go in its hand because these are not the skulls. These are their own unique entities. So how do we get them on the armor stand? Well, it's pretty easy. Let me show you. First of all, you need to put down a slab. You can put it on the ground or you can put it in the ground like that. And then you can drop your armor stand on top of that slab like that. And if you wanted to do it rotated, you could put it down at an angle like that. That's absolutely fine. Then just stick a few temporary blocks up behind them until it goes above their head height, just like that. Then grab whatever head you want on the armor stand and move your mouse or move your cursor until you can actually get the outline around the block in the background and then just click on it. So, and if you want the mob to be facing a different direction from the armor stand, just pivot yourself around and you can do it like that. And then let's put that one on there and you'll see that they line up with the armor stand only when they're on slabs. If we move that slab, it's not going to line up with it anymore. And then you can dress and pose your armor stands like normal. But bear in mind, if you put a helmet on there, it's not always going to line up, particularly if you've changed the position of the head. But you could potentially make some quite interesting things out of there. And I suppose I ought to tell you how you actually pick and place these things and sit on them. Otherwise, I'm going to get a whole bunch of comments from people asking me how to do it. To put them on the ground, just right click on the ground like you would any item or block. To pick them up, you need to shift and click and they will pop off the ground and they will turn back into their entity form. And to sit on them, just right click on them without pressing shift and you will sit on it. And just like a boat or anything else, if you hold shift or press the space bar, you'll get out of it. Obviously on mobile, that's going to be different. And yes, this should work on mobile and Xbox and console and all those sorts of things. I can't imagine why it wouldn't. It's just how you get it on there, that's up to you. Now, there are a few things to bear in mind with this pack because this is effectively an entity and what you're holding in your hand here is that entity spawn egg. If we put down a mob spawner, for instance, and put that head inside there, it will start spawning the mob head. So, like when we're using this on Truly Bedrock, that's banned. We're not allowing that, that's against the rules because otherwise you can just farm all of these mob heads, which is not great. And because Bedrock Edition is, uh, you know, the game that it is, there's a few bugs in it when it comes to these things that makes actually dealing with them a little bit tricky. For instance, if I put this down, although it's got no collisions, I shouldn't be able to push it around or anything, you can actually hook it with a fishing rod. If you can get your rain right, there we go. And when I flick it, it's just going to go up. It's going to go up and 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 it's never ever going to stop and it's going to go through blocks so even if it gets underneath a block it's going to keep going up and that's going to keep going up and up and up and up and up and until I log out of the game. Once it gets unloaded and then I log back in again, it will stop. It's not going to go up anymore. But if you don't unload it and it keeps going, once it gets past 255 in the sky or Y level 255, it will despawn. Okay, for my next test, I'm going to come a little bit further away. Now, these things are immune to all types of damage. So if we like that TNT there and blow it up, you will see that the mob head does not move. However, if you were to pour lava on it, for whatever reason, it will cause the mob head to actually sink into the ground. It's not gone. It's just sinking. It's just going further and further and further down in the world. And like our one that went up in the world, what we have to do is log out to stop it going down. Or once it gets to Y level, I think five, it will despawn. So let's see what happens. Let's go all the way down. Let's dig a hole. Okay, so here it comes. It is coming down to the bottom of the world. I give myself a bit of cheeky night vision so we can see it going down. And look, I just found diamonds. So it should, once it gets to Y level five, just disappear. And there we go, it disappeared. And the reason for that is that you don't want it to be able to sink into the bedrock and not be able to get rid of it. And also, if you've got people on your realm or server or whatever that have decided they're going to be flicking all of these things into the sky or pouring lava on them to grief them, they're not going to take up the mob cap and uh, basically cause you loads of lag. They will despawn. 
Another couple of things you can do with this is to put them in minecarts and boats. You can get in that boat and you can actually pick the witch up in the boat and you can actually get more than one in a boat as well. If you can uh, get the positioning right and shove things about, you can actually pick up yeah, more than one entity in a boat. And then what you can do is you can actually sit on that while it's in the boat. Now, you can't control the boat while you're sitting on it, but it does make for some quite entertaining shenanigans. And likewise with the uh, minecart, you can, you should, he says, be able to sit on it while it's in the minecart, although I don't seem to be able to get a hold of it. There's one more thing I want to add to this before we go, and that is if you add on this TB add-on by Dan Rob's Probs for custom armor stands, we can do even more fun stuff with this. And basically, Dan was kind enough to make us an armor stand pack, which means that we can do a few different things with some armor stands, which actually makes them really good fun. So first of all, we can give the armor stand a golden carrot and make it turn invisible. We can give the armor stand a spider eye and make it small. And we can also give the armor stand a slime ball and make it float so it no longer will sink when it gets affected by gravity. So what does this mean for our mob heads and how do I get hold of it? Well, I will be releasing it on my foxynotel.com website. Dan says that's fine for me to do. If you want to give him a big, big thank you, please do head over to his video and subscribe and comment to him and join his Twitter and everything like that and tell him what a wonderful job he's done because these are amazing. But yeah, let's uh, let's see what we can do. Let's let's get our wandering trader. Let's do the same trick that we did before. Let's put this armor stand on this slab here and let's pile up a few blocks next to it like that. Let's put the head on and let's make the armor stand invisible, but let's give it some clothes. So apart from the fact that it's a little bit armless, it kind of looks like it's the, uh, yeah, like a, what's one of those things that you get in castles, like a knight in shining armor type thing. But that's not the fun part for me. The fun part for me is making these small. And when you make them small, you don't actually need the slab because the positioning is just happens to be in the right place. So let's give this <laughs> wandering trader the wandering trader's son. There we go. Let's put that on there. And then when we put the armor on as well, it actually scales with it. So how cool is that? And you can still position it and everything like that. It's amazing. Now, what we can also do if we give the, both of these a slime block is that we can get then get rid of the blocks underneath them and they will float. So you don't need to worry too much about the, uh, yeah, about the slab or anything. You can decorate that however you want. You can make it look like they're jumping up in the air. You can repose them. Oh, dear. I clicked it with a slime block. Oh, no. Oops. Oh, mate. Yeah, I was going to say you could, you know, oh, jeez. You've, you've lost your head, sir. You've, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. What am I going to do? You've you've totally... Oh, oh, no. Oh, this isn't right at all. Oh, I'm sorry, Wondering. Oh, I'm, oh, jeez. Oh, and with that note, I'm going to have to say thank you all very much for watching this video. I do hope you've enjoyed it, and I do really hope that you enjoy these packs. If you do, please do join my Discord and post in my Pictures channel all of the fun things that you get up to them with them and all of the fun ways of using them. I can't wait to see them. I'm certainly having a great time playing with them on Trudy Bedrock Season 2. Anyway, that's enough from me. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do leave a like. If you haven't already, please do consider subscribing. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.